Senator Macdonald. Uh, thank you, Acting Deputy President. And I rise to uh, also speak to this private senator's bill. I always think it's fascinating to spend some time in the chamber listening to the contributions of various uh, senators who all represent different uh, parts of the country. Uh, and I always listen uh, closely to Senator Rice because she is always incredibly sincere and passionate in her uh, defence of her region and, uh, and the environment. Um, I come from the other end of the country, in Queensland, where we have had a proud history of incredibly considered uh, timber cutting. And so, uh, while Senator Ciccone made some representations on representing uh, workers, I would suggest that that has long been uh, the role of the National Party, is to ensure that primary industries, of which I include timber cutting to be one, be represented. And the certainty uh, that's required for uh, those people who are still operating in the Maryborough region, uh, those people who are operating in the Cape, the uh, native title holders and indigenous uh, people of the, the north who are now accessing their own uh, hardwood timbers, that they be given the rights and opportunities to uh, develop their industries uh, in an appropriate and sensitive and well-regulated environment. And that is something that I believe uh, is in the best interests of our communities, of our people, and of course in being able to utilise the most renewable and sustainable uh, resource there is, probably other than sugarcane, uh, but is uh, timber. And so I rise to, to support this legislation uh, in its attempt to provide certainty, in its attempt to uh, allow that men and women who are employed mm. in the timber industry uh, particularly under the RFAs, to have a sense uh, that they will not be uh, held up or have the, the uh, industry that they are so passionate about and work so hard in uh, to be um, in any way curtailed. The EPBC Act is one that, uh, as we all know, is incredibly difficult to deal with. And in Queensland, particularly in the far north of the state, uh, it is not uncommon for projects to get to seven or eight years to spend you know, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in consultants' fees before they just withdraw and walk away from uh, investment in our part of the state. Now, I think that's a, an incredible tragedy because uh, we are crying out for jobs for those communities. Um, as Senator McCarthy was talking about in the chamber the other day of purposeful meaningful work, and that only happens when we approve projects and allow for investment to go forward. And, uh, and certainty is a very important part of that. Uh, again, in Queensland, we had a, a timber industry that was so successful, so environmentally light in its touch, uh, that the, the, the region was nominated for World Heritage listing. It was so pristine after 100 years of logging. And I speak to some of those, well, particularly men, who came out as immigrants from different parts of the country to go into timber cutting. And they understand and they know that country as well as anyone. They talk about which tree to take and from which direction. And during the school holidays, I took my son and we drove up the Kirima Range Road uh, to the Blenko Falls, which was the old timber cutting uh, track uh, to allow the, the timber to come more directly down to, to the coast, to the, um, to the mills, rather than work their way around uh, the other Karanda Range and other more uh, further away roads. Anyway, beautiful. And it is impossible to see where those timber activities used to be because they have now been completely um, regrown. And, uh, and the, some of the timber cutters tell me that if they went back a month after they'd cut, it was difficult to see where they were, but certainly six months or a year later, um, all traces of their activities were, were gone. Such was the sensitive touch that they had in that part of the country. And so I think some of Senator Rice's comments were, uh, I'm sure, well made, but they're really better directed at the state government, the Victorian government, who is uh, failing to carry out the work that they are required to do under their regulations. You know, in Queensland, we have a fully sustainable hardwood industry. It is highly regulated. 
uh, and it is something that we should be incredibly proud of, is the expertise and knowledge of our uh, timber workers and industry. But what they do require is certainty to know that they will still be able to operate in the months and years ahead, that they will be able to bring their children into that industry and pass on that deep knowledge of, of understanding the forests, the timbers they take and how it, it uh, continues to make it healthy. Uh, previously, we used to have more fires uh, and more um, uh, events that would have managed forests and, and rangelands in a different way. Uh, as humans, we now try and stop that from happening. We fear fire. And of course, the result has been that we've got uh, growth in different places that, that was, be was being managed by timber cutters, by the forestry industry, and we are now leaving parts of the country uh, completely exposed to the hot fires that we've had uh, more recently. So I support this, this uh, private senator's bill. I recommend it to you because I do believe it provides a sense of certainty for the uh, RFAs and the people who work in them, the people who have deep expertise and sensitivity for the place they work, the communities that, that they live in. Thank you. Thank you, Senator McDonald.